What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. D and Do commentary. We've got Maria, 1995, 1707. BLS, 95. Uh, he is 1762. So two very good players here. Um, it'd be interesting enough if they were both born in 1995. That would make them both, what, 19? All right, so BLS opens up Lone Fire, Lone Fire Hermitry. And I imagine he's going to trigger Hermitry's effect. Best card. Nope. He's going to activate uh, Charity first. And then that's pretty much going to ensure that he can't miss on the effect. Now, in Duel 1, BLS had pretty much the greatest opening hand you could, or he had the greatest field setup you could imagine. He had Solemn Warning, a Stardust Dragon, two Felgrands, and he fucking lost. And I was just like, what? He booked his own Stardust, which is probably the dumbest thing ever which turned off its negation and then he just lost everything um, Maria had double breakthrough skill for both of the Felgrands and he dark hold and just ripped his field in half alright so BLS activates Hermitry and Hermitry hit this guy right here uh, Trevor Sprout which gets you a level 1 so I think it, what, it gets itself or Spore that's pretty much all it does right it just, it just gets Spore or I guess it can get another cop. I mean, can it get itself? I know it has to get like a level one. Yeah, I guess you can get itself. Okay. It's only once per duel? Damn. Okay, I guess it's a one of. Anyways, so Maria's playing hat. And he's going to open with uh, Mermilio. And I wonder if he'll get bottomless or, well... Huh, okay, well, it falls in the Phoenix chain, so I guess you don't have to worry about what he's going to get. I was thinking maybe Bottomless Trap Hole because it's, it's, it's a better counter to Soul Charge. You know what I mean? Nightmare is good too, but I think I would rather have... I think I'd rather have um, Bottomless in this matchup. Like, if I'm going to use Mermillo to search it. Alright, so that gets Phoenix chained, and... I would say that I would say that um, BLS needs another monster on board. He needs to he needs to be able to use this uh, this spore. So you see, artifact ignition is triggered, and it's on his set card. And ooh, anytime you have to do your own mirror attack, you're not in a good position. And that looks like what he's going to do. He's going to pop his own set. I mean, granted, I guess artifact ignition is replaced by another mirror attack, but uh, to be honest, I find that, that I think the Hermitry is pretty, like, I feel like it's pretty expendable. But it gets DD Crow anyway. And I was thinking, I was like, mm, well, I guess you can't read those two specific cards. But more or less, maybe you should have used um, Muratek's effect first. So Muratek, uh, he's not coming out to play because he got DD Crowed. And Karee Bandit is played. And I would have to imagine you're going to activate. Hermitry's effect. Oh, well, he doesn't even activate Hermitry's effect. Which he would have ended up hitting on anyway. He would have hit uh, Marshall Leaf. So, there's a debunk. Damn, Kurashuma on the last card. So he gets to pop. Wait, Kurashuma is optional, right? I don't think that you want to pop here because we know that to be a Mara attack. <laughs> if Kurashuma is not optional, that sucks. You can target. Okay, yep. So then obviously you don't want to activate Curse Shumo's effect. And um, did he get debunk? I feel like he got debunk. I mean, I would have took MST. I'm still not understanding why he didn't activate Hermitry's effect that turn. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm at a loss. All right, so down comes um, Dianara, which we knew he had. That gets hit with Solemn Warning. This back row card is of no use right now because it's Marotech. Maria just sets one, two, and it's probably going to pass turn. He already used his normal summon. Alright, we see the end phase MST on a set card. That's Mind Crush. And a second end phase MST on Solemn Morning. So this game pretty much seems like it's wrapped up like Dorex. Now. Maybe this time he'll activate Hermitry's effects. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so he is going to activate it. Now he digs so deep into his deck. I mean, the chances of that charity influencing, you know, what he was going to mill, no chance at all. It was Breakthrough Skill. It's interesting he's playing Breakthrough Skill and um, 
playing Breakthrough Skill alongside Phoenix Chain. And that Spore has just been sitting there. And I would have attacked with Spore. Like, no, no bullshit. I mean, if Spore is just going to sit there and do nothing, I think I'm probably just going to go ahead and attack with it. I mean, if you run my Spore over, I don't really care. As long as I got Hermit Tree, I'm good. So I guess this is Kurashumo that he set. Otherwise, I think he probably would have just summoned whatever that monster is and um, used it with uh, Spore to Synchro. So he's going to call five right now. I think he's going to mill a Hermit Tree because we haven't seen more than one Hermit Tree so far. Princess Sprout is milled. Rivalry of Warlords. Debunk. Soul Charge. Peacekeeper. I mean, that is a monster mill right there. So Soul Charge, Debunk, and Rivalry all go back. I think Maria is scooping it up, and that is exactly what's happening. Um, I would say, obviously, Maria just got, like, curb stomped there. But... I don't know. I mean, to me, outside of the initial hermitry, it's like BLS didn't really do much after that. Like, you know what I mean? Everything else was completely reliant on his back row. You know, like he used Warning to kill a monster. He used Fiendish Chain. He used DD Crow. Like, it was all hand traps and, you know, regular traps that did all the work. The hermitry didn't really do anything. You know, the Spore just sat there in defense mode the entire time. Um, I don't know. I feel, I feel like... Um, I feel like Maria can take this game. I, I really do. I'm trying to think of what cards, if I was playing Hat, I would consider taking out. I know I'd be having, I, I know I'd be playing three Maxi. I mean, not three Maxi, but uh, three MSTs. Like I, I would, if I wasn't main decking those, I would definitely side them in. Um, I still love Fairy Wind, man. Fairy Wind is. I'm gonna keep bringing Fairy Wind up until everybody plays it. That card is so fucking good, especially against. A deck in Sylvan, you know, plays a field spell, right? And then you're going to side in Robbery of Warlords? Like, I just played against Sylvan's um, maybe about an hour ago with uh, Bujins. And I beat him. And one of the uh, reasons I did was because he played Curry Bandit and he milled a Kurashumo. And he hit Martial Leaf, which killed my Yamato. And then he hit um, he hit um, Kurashumo and he targeted my Fairy Wind. And I killed Light Mirror and Mount Sylvania. So I was like, damn, that's good. So, I mean, even though I went neg, I ended up getting, I ended up recovering. So, all right, a blind MST hits a Torrential Tribute, and then it looks like Maria's going to activate Sanctum. Sanctum is best card, I swear. Sanctum is the best card. Without Sanctum, this would not even be, an, it wouldn't even be an art type, I swear. So, Karee Bandit is dead, and that's bad for BLS. Um, Like, I might lose the game bad, because your normal summon is gone, your graveyard's not set up, and if you have Soul Charge, it's dead. So, yeah. And you're probably going to take, well, I was going to say at least 21 to the face, but it looks like it could be 35. Uh, when I play against decks that use Soul Charge, I like to try and do as much damage as quickly as possible to try and, like, turn off Soul Charge. Especially decks like Mythic Rulers, Infernity, um, you know, uh, this deck, you know, Sylvan's. Decks that you know commonly will try and go, like, super ham with Soul Charge. They'll try and go, like, four deep. So, um... Lone Fire Blossom is summoned. Um, Maria wisely evacs it. Uh, the way that I look at it is, even though you took the neg there, if you can attack him for, well, actually, you could just game him here. <laughs> but I was going to say, if you could attack him for another 37, you turn off Soul Charge. But it looks like he's just straight up going for game. And BLS is thinking. I feel like he might have a Phoenix Chain, and that might be an artifact ignition. No, that's not ignition. He would have used it. Um. It's not MST either. He'd have used that also. He would have just blind. He would have. He would have used MST during the end phase. Um, yeah, I feel like maybe if this isn't Phoenix Chain. Okay, it's Book of Moon. So Marotech is put face down. He eats three thousand. I would. Hmm. See, this is why I run Giant Hand. <laughs> I just added that card in. I don't care if I don't have one in real life. I still run that motherfucker. I would consider making Cowboy here. And I know the Cowboy won't survive, but you're only at 500 life points. So you can't use Soul Charge and really... Well, you know what? Actually, no, I wouldn't even Ixie. I don't know, though. Ice Hand... I don't know how good Ice Hand's going to be. All right, so down comes Lone Fire Blossom. And... He's going to get, I imagine, Hermitry. Um, he might get out the second Lone Fire Blossom. I, I'd keep it in my deck, to be honest. 
It's not like you're going to soul charge anytime this game anyway. All right, so he gets the second low file out. And he goes for Hermitry. He's going to activate the effect. This is going to be a hard matchup for BLS to win. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's impossible. I say that because he doesn't have adequate ways of dealing with the hand monsters. He just doesn't. Um, Stardust, obviously, is a good way of doing that. But for... For you to get Stardust um, in in Sylvans, like you have to you have to get your graveyard set up early, and then you usually have to like Soul Charge, and then from there you can get you know your Lone Fire shenanigans and shit. But the way Maria just was like, nope, I'm gonna kill your Kuri Bandit, and I'm gonna evac your Lone Fire, and I'm gonna make sure you don't have any Phil Presence. You know, he was basically able to uh, keep him from getting his graveyard set up and turn Soul Charge off in the process. Like even if BLS has Soul Charge now. With double lone fire, like it's not going to do anything. He doesn't have enough life points to to make it effective. You know what I mean? Sure, he can run over Ice Hand right now. That's a given, but I don't know. I, I feel like Fire Hand Crash just beats him, right? You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, all he needs to do is just be like, all right, Fire Hand Crash. You know, and he obviously has to put this in attack mode. Otherwise, Murder Tech would just run it over. So Ice Hand is inconsequential. So is this guy. He does have Soul Charge, and that, that's that's what I was talking about. That's why you just beat, 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 beat for damage. Um, he goes Lone Fire, that gets crowed. So he doesn't take a 1,000 because it never hit the field. But I don't know. Now he can't attack. <laughs> now he can't attack. So um, I'm fairly certain that Maria can just 101 him for game now. You know what I mean? Like, now you can't attack because you did. No! Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Yeah, you just because your monster didn't hit the field doesn't mean that you can attack. You still activated Soul Charge. It just didn't completely resolve. You still can't summon. That'd be like if you... Or you still can't attack. That'd be like if you activated Soul Charge and I bottomless your guy. You trying to attack. No, you can't. You can't activate it. Now, nowhere does it say um, if your monster doesn't hit the field or if your monster doesn't live, you know, you can attack with Soul Charge. You can't attack, dude. So... He's going to activate Hermitry's effect. He gets Sharub, which, what, is the guy that gets Spore or something? Yeah, it, it, that that's the guy that gets Spore. Um, I guess he can get Spore, but what can he do with it if he already has Hermitry? I mean, you could put it in defense mode, hypothetically, but you still lose to... Oh, never mind. He debunks Sharub. So did he not draw? I feel like he may I feel like he might not have drawn. From um I feel like he may not have, have drawn from uh his um his what's it called? His uh his effect. Because uh Sharub still is technically excavated, it just doesn't activate when it hits the graveyard, so you still get the draw. Anyways, so BLS sets a card in his back row, which what could possibly save him other than a composed evac device? Oh, never mind. That pretty much solves that problem. So, um, down comes Mermilio, which I would get Nightmare now. I would get Nightmare and not Bottomless. And I imagine you go... Okay, so he's going to exceed into 101, I guess. He does. You know, I think I would have went. I think I would have tried to crash first before going 101. I guess it doesn't matter because he still technically has fire hand. Um, whatever this back row is, it can't stop both of them unless it's torrential. But no, that wouldn't work either because he would still technically have the materials. So yeah, BLS pretty much can't win. There, there's a, there is basically no way he can win unless he had, unless this was like a phoenix chain or okay breakthrough skill whatever. And this was a, he had a Skullmeister in hand, because then you could just negate it during the damage step. But um, either way, he's going to ram fire hand, he's going to kill Hermit Tree, he's going to get ice hand, and then all these dudes are just going to beat his ass down. So yeah, he takes some damage. And yes, BLS, you shouldn't have lost game one, but you were stupid and you attacked with Stardust in the four back row, and you could have, you essentially didn't need to attack with Stardust. You should have just attacked with your. Uh, Felgrands, and when one attacked into a D prison, you should have just turned that Felgrand off, uh, protecting itself from D prison. You should have kept attacking with your Felgrands, 
And then Stardust would have been face up to protect you from all of those cards that just raped you. So, yep, that's the end of the duel. BLS loses. Thank you guys for watching, as always.